I have had a lot of strange experiences in my house growing up, and I thought I would share a few. The house I grew up in was built in the 50s, and was a model for the neighborhood that would eventually build up around it. My mother actually grew up in the house first, purchased it from my grandparents, which has kept the house and the family for almost 50 years now and counting. I spent quite a bit of time alone in the house growing up, with a strong sense that I was never quite alone, <laughs> but it never really bothered me. That is unless I had to go downstairs. Without fail, that would change the feeling in the house entirely. It was always cold down there and foreboding. It caused a sense of dread when you had to go downstairs. And I got chills just thinking about it. I mean, you'd imagine with that description that it's unfinished, but it's actually quite nice. It has a large family room with a TV and a fireplace, along with a finished bathroom, computer room, bedroom, separate laundry room, and a large storage room. The storage room was the worst part of the basement and hands down the place I liked the least, its door, which was a sliding wooden door, much like all the other rooms in the basement, was also directly next to the TV, and always left a horrible and easy feeling when I watched TV downstairs as a child. Anyways, going downstairs was always a bit of a process. I would slowly descend the stairs, peek around the wall into the family room to make sure the coast was clear, then bolt for the light switch, go back upstairs. Now that was even worse. Every single time, I would have to switch the lights off, lest I get in trouble with my father and, God forbid, sent back down to turn them off, and bolt up the stairs like my ass was on fire and a bucket of water waited at the top. I have never once ran up there without the sense that I am being chased by something and was losing the race. Growing up, I would hear noises and even voices downstairs. While home alone, I would hear people running downstairs, upstairs sometimes, which would prompt me into thinking that someone had come home, only to find that I was still alone. I would be called downstairs from what sounded like my mother, only to discover no one was there And when I went down. It wasn't unusual for the lights to be off when peering downstairs, as my father was crazy about wasting power, and mother only used the ones she absolutely needed, which would only include the ones inside the laundry room. Its door was under the stairs, meaning that I would ever never know if the call from my mother was legit or not, until I would go downstairs, slide open its door and discover that the laundry room lights were off, and that I was the only one home. Then shortly after realizing that, I was standing in my basement alone in the dark. This would often happen, and never got less gut-wrenchingly scary when it did. For a period of time, while this was all going on, I would have these dreams where I was downstairs doing what I always did in the basement, playing video games, watching TV, etc. But there would be a lady in a white dress of sorts, standing there watching me. I would look to my right, and she was there in the distance, standing still and arms drawn in front of her watching. I would turn my head to the left and everything was just as it should be, except she would again be in the distance by the far wall, standing and watching. Sometimes. I would look all around me, just to see if she would still be there, but turn again to find her sitting next to me, body straight, but head and stare fixed straight right at me. That is when I would immediately burst up awake, drenched in sweat. The unused spare bedroom downstairs also had a walk-in closet housing, old military uniforms and other jackets and clothings that was preserved in plastic covers. Sometimes as a child, friends and I would play hide and seek down there and would be, that spot would be my favorite hiding spot, since one could remain hiding amongst the clothes even when someone was actively looking right in your direction. The clothes made a very distinctive sound when touched or moved, and nothing else in the house sounded like it. As I got older, the weird basement activities began to intensify. I would often hear that noise before making my mad dash upstairs. The light switch for the family room is right outside the doorway to the bedroom, and when I would approach it to go upstairs, I would hear that rustling, as if something was emerging from the closet. Seeing that I had a view of the open doorway into the pitch black room from the light switch, this caused me to flip and bolt up the stairs for dear life even quicker than normal. Like I mentioned now, the activity in the basement ramped up as I got older. My then girlfriend at the time, let's call her Lind, and I would hang out downstairs constantly to avoid my parents. It was basically our own space for better or worse. 
One day we finished watching a movie, and she went to use the bathroom. When she was in there, I had to check something on my computer, which was up in my bedroom without thinking. I ran upstairs to quickly check it out, then moments later came back downstairs. She was out of the bathroom and looking at me with what she calls her skeptical eyes. I asked her what was up, and she said, Very funny. I was confused and asked what she was talking about. She explained I had run up and down the stairs very quickly, then opened the storage door and, and dragged something heavy out and in front of the bathroom to scare her. I didn't know what to say. I tried to tell her that I ran upstairs to check my computer and that I hadn't been downstairs at all, but she did not believe me. Luckily, I had typed out a few messages on AIM while upstairs. It was able to show her the chat log times, which proved my point, but then at the same time freaked her out. She also realized that she never heard whatever was dragged in front of the door actually being dragged back to where it came from, which scared her even further. This happened to her several more times over the period of a few weeks. I could go on and on, but I'll end with this final story. Though I have dozens of stories I could write about, this is one that really sticks out in my mind as a major event. A few years later, Lynn and I were now married, and we were asked to dog sit for my mother and father while they went on vacation. My father had two shih tzus, which they get it off to remain in the kitchen. Lynn and I decided we should just stay over for a few days as my parents' home was, in a way, a small vacation for us as well. One night, like the beginning of a cliché horror movie, I began vigorously storming outside. The dark house would completely illuminate from the bright lightning flashes, only to then shake from tremendously loud thunder just seconds later. The two dogs loved thunderstorms and never barked nor freaked out. If anything, it likely helped them sleep, as I could never wake them up to use the bathroom if one of them was in the area. Around midnight, as my wife and I laid in bed with the TV and lights off so that we can go to sleep, I thought I heard footsteps on the stairs, but chalked it up to the storm. Shortly afterwards, I heard the sliding door at the top of the stairs, which I had locked and only could only be locked from the inside, slide open and a dog suddenly started to go crazy. I would never heard them bark like this in my whole entire life. I threw off my covers and told Lynn, I'm going to check on them. That's when we heard it. Above the sound of the rain and their barking, we both suddenly hear a woman who sounds exactly like my mother speaking to them. I couldn't quite make out exactly what was being said, but I could tell it was in a very similar, consoling tone that, that my mother would do if they were scared about something. I wondered for a moment if my parents had actually come home early, but quickly realized that I would have been notified. Seeing the car pull up or heck, heard both back doors open, then, then of course, a struggle with a one-way lock on the sliding door, not only that. The dogs would have been thrilled to see them, which was an entirely different bark. No, this was a terror. They snarled, yelped, and vigorously barked over and over while the familiar voice of my mother was still speaking. I told Lynn I had to investigate in case it was an intruder, but deep down, we both knew that we were dealing with something else. I crept out of bed, my sounds masked by the chaos happening both outside and inside the house. The door to the room led to the hallway, which was shaped like an L and exiting the room would put you at the bottom right of that shape, in other words, the end of a smaller line of an L-letter shape, if that makes sense. Against Lynn's pleading, I creep out of the door and into the hallway. The wall leading from the bed in the hall to the room are lined up with full-body mirrors, which nearly gave me a heart attack when lightning suddenly illuminated the hallway, revealing my reflection standing directly next to me. Needless to say, we both looked shocked to be there. I regroup, shot Linda, you didn't see that look, and got back to task. I peered my head around the corner and saw both dogs with their backs pressed up against the gate, both looking up at something that was just behind the wall to the right and out of sight. I stood there wondering what to do. Part of me wanted to just lock myself in the room with Lynn. The other half wanted to say fuck it and just rush into the kitchen and deal with whatever I, I would find. I had spent my life rushing upstairs away from unseen fears in my house, and frankly, I wasn't a kid anymore, and I was tired of that fucking shit. I glanced at Lynn again, then decided I was going in. I bolted towards the kitchen at full speed. I reached the gate in time to see both dog instantly start barking. The voice stopped, and both their heads just turned and looked at me. I whipped the under half of my body over the gate to peer into the kitchen, only to see it empty. I glanced down at them, and they were both suddenly calm, but sitting in puddles with their own pee. Accidents of that nature never, never happen. So that was further confirmation to me that something was definitely wrong. 
I hopped over the gates and walked to the sliding door at the opposite end of the kitchen, which was now unlocked and opened. The back door was still locked from the inside and closed like I left it, but despite it being 80 degrees outside in summertime, the area in front of the back door was absolutely freezing. I glanced downstairs and it was beyond pitch black and didn't seem to illuminate like the rest of the house did from the flashes of lightning. I had enough adrenaline at this point to just bolt downstairs into the darkness and confront my childhood tormentor head on and all enough. I was damn tempted to do so. Rational thought kicked in, however, and I closed the sliding door and tended to the dog, spending the next hour or so giving them a bath and cleaning the floor. Lynn donned her, you're a fucking idiot for doing that, eyes, but I actually felt good about it. I'm over that bitch and her tricks. Several weeks later, when my parents' vacation was over, I was visiting their house and found my mother sitting at the kitchen table, which is right across from the sliding door to the basement stairs. I decided to sit down and tell her what happened that night as we were watching the dogs. I mentioned the stairs and the strange woman's voice and she went completely pale and froze. She explained that. As a child, she would hear a voice that sounded very close to her aunt, which would trick her into coming down into the basement, though it was always dark and empty. This was interesting, but I must note that her aunt was and is still alive to this day. She too was scared to go into the basement as a child because of this, and shared the sense of being chased up the stairs even to this day, she also said, even recently, that while sitting alone at the table, she would sometimes hear someone stop up the stairs at an inhuman speed, stop at the sliding door and never open it though. The dogs hear it as well and they're not fans of this. So far to this day, I don't quite know what roams the house and why it does it. I just know it's a woman or that it can make itself sound like one. It's apparently a bit on the shy side when it comes to actually being seen, but I'm okay with that. And I'll take my sweet time going up the stairs though. I still get the sensation that I should be running for my life. The Storage Room When I was a kid, a very popular pastime at my house was to play hide-and-go-seek in my basement. The thrill of hiding combined with the basement's general creep factor made for an invigorating game. As, as I explained in my previous post, there were certain rooms in the basement that I made a point to avoid at all times, and the storage room was at the top of that list. My basement in general is a place of extreme creepiness and in short, is haunted by a woman or at least something that betrays itself as a woman. Bottom line, she plagued my childhood with constant terror and trickery. Anyways, that, that day, I experienced game after game of being found quicker than others and I was getting frustrated. The idea popped in my head to surprise everyone by hiding in the one place that they would never think to look for me. The storage room. I was pretty uneasy about this decision as I went against everything I believed, but my desire to win outmatched the logic centers of my brain. The storage room was a dark and dank place that consisted of a giant square shelf in the middle of the room, with a path carved out around it. It was filled with items ranging from Christmas lawn elves, Halloween decorations, china, tools, dresser, etc. So even with the lights turned on, there was plenty of creepy things staring back at you the entire time you are in there. It was my friend Kay's turn to start counting and I was giddy with excitement to win. She started counting down from 20 and I bolted towards one of my common rooms, but lagged slightly behind everyone else so I could divert to the storage room at the very last second to conceal my plan from my friends. The last thing I needed was to be ratted out by one of my other friends. If they were caught, I was in it to win it. I slid open the storage room door, turned on the lights and closed the door behind me. It was cold and damp which was the norm for this room, but nothing I couldn't handle. Since I was already out of time at this point, I had to make a quick decision on where to hide, so I ducked down behind a piece of luggage that barely concealed me. This was not ideal, and there was definitely more complex paths through the stored items that I could hide in. But I already heard someone outside the door and didn't have much time to search for a better option. I see Kay slide open the door and come into the room to look around. I figured I must have made too much noise when closing the door so she knew I was in here. 
She was rubbing her shoulders, highlighting the temperature difference from the, from the other rooms to this one, something my adrenaline had made me forget about. It was definitely cold. She and another friend of mine came in and began to scan the room, looking for any disturbances. As they did this, I began to feel a chill run up my spine, and the hair stood up on my arm. The temperature almost seemed to be getting colder, and Kay reflected this as she began to hug herself for warmth, despite familiar warning signs and rising creep factors that were quickly highlighting my poor decision to hide in this spot. Kay was quickly approaching me, and in, in mere seconds, I would be smack dab in the center of her line of sight. Ending the game and allowing us to leave the room, she stands almost directly in front of the piece of luggage I was crouched behind and pans her head around the room again. Something was off. Kay hated this room as much as I did and wasn't about to play a joke as I knew she wanted to leave it as much as I did. But despite me being clearly in her view, she was acting like she didn't even see me. She even looked down at me to where we pretty much made eye contact only for her brow to wrinkle and head to cock on the side like something, something someone would do when they weren't sure they were right about something, only to be informed that they weren't right about it. She let out a, huh, and my other friend asked, anything? No, she replied in a puzzled tone. I stared up at her with a helpless look of confusion on my face as I grew even colder. I couldn't believe what I was seeing as Kay was neither the type to play pranks nor good enough an actor to look right at me and not break character. She backed away from me, turned and began walking towards the door while still scanning the room and checking behind other items. I sat up in my spot, completely dumbfounded and confused watching them as I heard a friend in the distance shout, He's here! And just like that, Kay flipped the light off and slid the door shut. I was alone, alone in the dark, in the room I feared the most inside my haunted house and the only people that made me feel safe enough to do such a thing had just left, all while seemingly unaware I was even there. It was freezing and despite having a small window that often illuminated the room, it was still pitch black. Despite being around noon on a sunny summer day, the light that should be coming through the window but wasn't making a dent on the darkness. I sat in complete silence for a moment, breathing hard and quietly freaking out. In fact, it was so quiet my ears began to ring. The ringing was broken when I began to hear slight noises and creaks, like some was shifting their way through the mess of items at random places in the room. I was petrified with fear and all the hairs on my body stood up straight as I began to get an unusual feeling. Have you ever hit somewhere creepy or dark, but since you were hiding there with someone else you felt safe, even though you still felt creeped out, because you knew someone was behind you? I had that sense. The sense that someone was behind me, hiding with me. I started to feel something touch my back in a way that I can only describe as someone doing the itsy bitsy spider, with their fingers walking from my lower back to my shoulders. I, I was too scared to move from where I was, because the path to the door was an obstacle course even with the lights on, and would be a complete disaster with the lights up. I imagined trying to run for the door and being chased down by whatever was behind me and tripping which was unnerving to say the least. I needed help. I put my hands over my ears and just started to scream, HELP! at the top of my lungs. I said it over and over and over and over again. As I felt more hands touching my arms, my head and fingers running through my hair. I kept shouting as loud as I could and began to feel a cold breath in my right ear, despite my hand covering it. Still with my ears covered and eyes closed, the touching finally stopped. I then felt someone start rubbing my back in the same consoling way that only my mom did when I would have a bad day or be sad about something. I heard the muffled voice of my mom say, What's wrong? I was overjoyed and quickly dropped my hands, lifted my head and opened my eyes to thank my mother for saving me. It was pitch dark. I had it at this point. I was five minutes overdue for an epic noping the fuck out of there. I burst up from my spot and took very short but quick steps towards where I thought the door was. It wasn't graceful by any means, and I knocked over a ton of stuff, but I finally hit the door and slid it open to the family room, and slammed the door behind me. The light was on, but it was empty. This was the room that we all gathered in each game, or even while looking for each other, and there generally was at least one or two people hanging out there. While others were still off searching, I was confused, but I heard voices coming from the, from the rooms on the other side of the basement. I cautiously walked over to the doorway of the spare bedroom and could see my friends looking in the walk-in closet, with their backs to me. 
Reluctantly, I asked, what are you guys doing? They all jumped and looked completely freaked out. I was furious and asked why they left me in the storage room, ignore my screams, and why they were on the other side of the basement. Kay, noticeably weirded out, swore to me that she never saw me. I then explained that she and everyone else had started hearing my voice in the spare bedroom closet. Apparently, when they all pour into the closet to try to find me, they would then start to hear my voice in the office, then the bathroom, then the laundry room. They couldn't figure out how I was evading them, only to lure them to different rooms, then to evade them again. I told them I was never in any of those rooms, and had been in the storage room the entire time. Seconds later, we were bursting out of the back door of the house. I told them what happened to me, and Kay felt so bad that she didn't help or see me, that she was almost in tears. Needless to say, we took a break from that game for a while. Sadly, this was just one afternoon in a haunted house I lived in for 18 years, and events like this were far more common than I like to admit. I still to this day rarely ever go back into that room.